Oh. Hello, Martin. How are you? Hi, Harris. I'm good. Thanks. How about you? Excellent. New Monday, new ice cream, new coffee, and new lubrication topic. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. So this one is sad. This one is tragic. And uh, I always like like what what they said. They say in court that you need to speak the truth, whole truth, and nothing nothing but the truth. And I would like to refer to the. Uh, whole truth right now when they when we speak about greed especially everybody and uh, all the trainings are saying that there are three elements in greed and <laughs> what me too i say that <laughs> yeah so there there are officially three elements in greed and that's base oil thickener and additives while in reality there are actually four but nobody likes the fourth one and that's contamination and that reality it's there we can we can avoid mentioning it as, <laughs> as much as we want, but it's still there, and it has a huge, enormous impact to everything. So I would like to speak about that today, about this, what everybody puts under the carpet, because just like in medicine, the hygiene is half of your health system. So let's talk about let's talk about contamination. Who are the enemies? How many of them? How do they look like? And what do they do? Okay, well, you could then say that oil has three elements, the oil, the base oil, the additives, and the contaminants. And, you know, last week, funnily enough, we had the example of the funnel. And it's a traditional way of transferring oil into the machine. Most people don't give it a second thought, but let's, let's just take a look at this. It's been lying on the bench gathering dust. There will be dust down in the inside and I could put a cloth in there and give it a wipe out and leave a few fibers there. I could clean the end maybe, but look at these convolutions designed to allow me to get it in at any angle type of thing. But those are a trap. They're going to trap particulates and they're going to trap water droplets because I've even seen this when I've been doing audits on the site. When I'm there and the, gu and the guy's thinking, this man's watching me. I better do the job right. And I've watched him go to a tap with his funnel and rinse it out with water. And, you know, you've probably seen this in the Middle East and places like that where water bottles are free issued to avoid dehydration. And of course, the water bottle gets used as a funnel. We cut the end off. And of course, there's still a few drops of water in that bottle. But, you know, you asked about, you mentioned the enemy. I have a bit of a standing joke because I like to talk about the hidden enemy. And if I may borrow such a phrase from one of the previous American presidents, the hidden enemy. And I call it hidden because, you know, when we're talking about particles, the ones that do the most damage are the ones we can't physically see. They're well below 40 micron in size and your eyes, even my young eyes, aren't able to see a particle bigger than 40 micron. And clearly it would help if the particle was at a complete contrast in color to the background. But mm -hmm. sadly, a lot of our contaminant particles are a very similar color to the oil. Mm -hmm. So they become camouflaged. And even if we could see them, it would be difficult. So, you know, we are talking about the hidden enemy. So when you say to somebody, look, you know, this is the particle count for your oil on your machine and it's not good. They look at you as if to say, I don't see any particles in the oil. My machine's still running. What's the problem? You know, and they hold up a can of new oil and they look at it and it's clear and bright and they can't see the particles. So they think new oil is clean oil, but we know new oil is definitely not clean oil. And in fact, new oil should be filtered to the correct level. Hence, in the background behind you, I'm delighted to see the filtration units for filtering those drums of oil to ensure that they are brought to a level that is at least four times cleaner than the target cleanliness of the machine, which really, you know, with contamination, one of our problems is your machinery can run with contamination and it can run happily with contamination, but it'll only do that for a period of time. Of course. If we were to remove that contamination, it would run much more happily for much, much longer. You know, we're talking life extensions of three to four times minimum when we clean up our act. And that's the target. Yeah. And this is the whole thing. It's a proactive type of target with contamination. It's a bit like, you know, obviously for some of us that have gone through lockdown, we've kind of ballooned slightly with all the snacking we're doing from the home office in the kitchen then. 
That's and why it's it's from here up. Not yes, there. exactly. Yeah. The, you know. Uh, anyway, getting back to the point, we can be obese. We can be overweight. We're not dropping dead. But the the, the chances we will at an earlier age if we don't deal with the issue. And so we set a target for our body weight, for our health reasons, and we try to stay within that target. We don't have to, but it's a good thing to do. It's proactive. And, you know, this is one of the sad realities I see with so many lubrication programs. They might be doing oil analysis. The laboratory might do particle counting for them. They'll definitely try to do some moisture detection because everybody perceives moisture to be the most destructive contaminant, when in fact, it's the second most destructive contaminant. But the problem is, is that, you know, the actual oil analysis results are really reflecting what you're doing on site. It's the same way that when I stand on the bathroom scales, it reflects what I've been doing in the kitchen. Exactly. And if I want to see improvements in those results, I've got to change what I do. And that's what we've got to say about contamination. We've got to change what we do on site. We've got to clean up and change what we do and stop thinking about what we used to do and think about what we need to do. And then we'll start to see improvements in our oil analysis results across the board. Yeah, the silent killer is a problem because uh, it's painless. It doesn't, doesn't happen overnight. It's not like an explosion. It's just uh, it's a slow decay. So nobody actually reacts. I have seen different different cases. I've seen cases when the, when the bearing was completely destroyed after 200 operating hours. That's yep. nice because you see the problem immediately. It sounds quite alarming. It sounds like a problem, so somebody will do something about it. But if you lose 30% uh, of, of your life, of your all of your assets, well, that's going to happen in a few years and nobody actually feels it. And that's, that's the problem. That, that's why we are pushing it uh, under the carpet very, very often. And that's exactly what we see. Yeah. So I remember your example about, about size of the aspirin on a... Uh, tab pill of the aspirin on a bottle of bottle of oil. That that's that's how much contamination is needed to destroy that that barrel of oil. Yeah, I mean, if we take a drum of oil like the one behind you, it's only a hundred milliliter of water getting into that drum to take it to a point that can reduce the bearing life by as much as sixty percent, because five hundred parts per million or 0.05 percent by volume of water in the oil is enough to take up to sixty percent of the life of the bearing. Similarly, when we start looking at the particles, you know, clearly every drum that arrives on site, typically the cleanliness of a drum of new oil, in fact, in reality, the number of particles in a drum of new oil is equivalent to one aspirin tablet. And you and I are married. We know what an aspirin tablet looks like, right? So, you know, and most guys would know what an aspirin tablet looks like. Uh, that's how many particles we're typically seeing, 200 milligrams typically in terms of the mass of the particulate in that drum of new oil, which is way too dirty for most hydraulic systems. I agree. I agree. And that's, that's definitely a problem. And I'm so happy we discuss it a little bit and maybe maybe to, to, to raise awareness a little bit more. Be careful about this silent enemy because yeah. it's there, it's reality. It's killing us nicely and slowly, continuously. Martin, yeah. thank you very much for this Monday and this session. We hope to see you next Monday. Good. Excellent. Thank you again, Harris. Thanks. Have a nice week. You too.